Hello all, Alison here and welcome to an episode of what I think I'm going to call Midweek Inking. We'll be looking in a bit more technical detail at various forms of inking, inking techniques, um, using colour, using distress inks very often, using distress oxides, sometimes it'll be sprays, sometimes it'll be other mediums. It won't necessarily be every week, um, but if I keep this sort of technical stuff technical stuff uh, in these episodes, then in a few minutes of fun, I can carry on just having a few minutes of fun. Uh, so yeah, w welcome. And this is in response to huge uh, feedback saying, yes, yes, please, please, some more detail about uh, blending on distress inks and using distress oxides. So we'll do a little bit today and then we'll just carry on unwrapping. But the first thing I should say is that Tim Holtz the designer and creator of the Distress Ink range, uh, manufactured then by Ranger Ink, is a magnificent uh, source to go to. He has demos that are available on his YouTube channel or via his website, timholtz.com. And there's oodles of stuff out there in terms of finding things out. So this these will be a very personal take. These will be the ways that I like to play with these inks. These will be thoughts from me on how to use them. But there really is a wealth of information out there uh, from Tim himself, as well as from many other YouTubers and artists and creators. So, you know, Google around. If this doesn't fill the gap you're looking for, <laughs> there will be something out there that does. But I thought the first thing that we might have a look at today is just a direct comparison, maybe, between using some distress inks and some distress oxides. And you can see I've pulled out the equivalent colours from each of those ranges. I've got a few manila tags and I've got some bits of distress watercolour paper. And these, are, these aren't these are actually ranger tags. These are tags like the ranger ones that I have been buying in bulk for years from a UK craft company who've sadly now gone out of business earlier this year, 2024. Um, but thankfully I've, I've still got a few boxes left of them, but they're pretty much exactly the same. And one of the reasons I like to use these is they've got a slight sheen on the surface. It's not completely grabby, uh, and absorbent of the inks when you put them on and the paper you use makes a huge difference to how these inks and oxides play. So if you're having trouble with them, if you're struggling to create looks that you've seen elsewhere, try different papers. That's that's absolutely step one. Try out different papers, try out different applications and yeah, um, explore. That's that's really how I've come to discover the ways I like to use the inks. It's just hours of endless playtime. So I'm going to pop the watercolour paper to the side for a moment. I know lots of people love to use watercolour paper with distress inks. It's, it's not my favourite. I, I like these manila tags. I like the warmth of tone it gives them. You'll see that the colour goes on differently uh, if it's just white behind. That's true when you use the Distress inks because they are translucent dye inks. When you're using Distress oxides, those are opaque pigment inks and so they cover up the background much more. Enough talking, talking boring. Um, <laughs> let's do some inking. So I do have sponges dedicated to each colour and and I do have oxide sponges and I do have ink sponges but when I'm working I tend to use a general sponge for all the browns or a general sponge for all the blues because given I'm mixing colours I really don't mind if a bit of one colour gets into another. If I wanted to be really precise I would go for the very specific ink colour if I wanted to be absolutely pure with it. The one thing I try to avoid doing is using an oxide sponge with an ink or an ink sponge with an oxide. I prefer to keep the ink oxide divide because once this sponge has got opaque ink on it, that's always going to impact in a different way on how this ink comes onto the paper. So let's just start. <laughs> I say enough talking. So this is Distress Ink, Faded Jean, Faded Jeans, longtime favourite colour. And I'll get my blue sponge. I dab it down a few times to pick up ink from here. And then coming on from the edge, 
So I start on my little acetate mat. This is like a baking sheet. If you've got the Tim Holtz craft mat, fantastic. Um, but I've I've always just used a a craft mat like this, and I'm rubbing in circles as you can see. And I tend to work from the corners just because that gives me a place to go. And I might come in from the opposite corner, and you can see that's leaving. There are little circular marks on that, but that's all going to alter as we go, as we layer up our colours. So let's start with just the Distress inks. So that's a little bit of faded jeans gone down. I'm going to grab some maybe hickory smoke, which is a beautiful grey. It's a beautiful cool grey, but this is a sponge I was using pumice stone on, so the chances are it will be bringing in some pumice stone as well. And again, I'm coming in from the edge of the tag rather than plonking it down in the middle of the tag. And I'm going in some places where there isn't any ink yet. And I'm going in other places over the top of ink that is already there. So that color is starting to deepen, uh, but also alter. So where that's now hickory smoke and faded jeans, it looks different from where it's faded jeans. Seems obvious, but I'm, I'm going to stick to the basics to start with, because that seemed to be the feedback that people were giving. And then I'm going to go in with a dark brown. So this is ground espresso, a really full on rich dark brown. And again, I'm going to come in just from an edge or a corner. And you can see that I'm coming towards the center of the tag now starting to build that color. And again, where I'm going over the faded jeans, we start to get a sort of lovely bronzy effect. And I'm gonna bring that color right into the center. But one of the other things I quite like to do is not have too much color on the whole of the tag. So there will be places where I don't add too much ink. I want to leave it a little bit free to play. Having done all that, I want to refresh my faded jeans and because these inks are translucent, the Distress inks, I can build that colour by coming in with a second layer. I can get a more intense blue and then where I go over the other colours, I can get a more intense sort of bronzy colour going on there where it's mixing with the ground espresso come back in and get a more intense blue. And again, by working from the edges, I'm creating this sense of a sort of an illusion of light coming in the center of the tag. So I'm now just smoothing that out a bit. Simple as that, an inked tag. And yes, there are certain marks on there. There are even some finger marks. You can see I'm starting to get inky, but that's always the sign of a good time. And there are going to be layers over the top of this. Other things are going to happen. So a background is a background is a background. Why worry? So let's pop that to one side so that we can now see what happens if we do pretty much the exact same process, but with the Distress Oxides instead. As I say, Distress Inks are translucent, whereas the Distress Oxides are opaque. So we started with faded jeans. Let's get our bluish oxide sponge. And again, I'll come in, I'll start by coming in from the corner, dab, 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 to pick up some ink onto the sponge. This sponge has had something else on it in the past. So, you know, that's not pure faded jeans, my apologies, but I said I was going to do it my way and I am. So again, coming in from the edge, you'll notice there's immediately more coverage with the oxides, that's because they're an opaque ink. So they are going to provide more toned color uh, than the translucent distress inks do. And although they're both faded jeans, by the nature of pigments and dyes, the tone of color is not exactly the same. Faded jeans in the distress ink is very much a sort of greenish denim and in the distress oxides is much more of a sort of purpley bluey denim uh, equally beautiful but just to be aware that it's not going to be the exact same color i have a feeling that what was on the sponge might have been shaded lilac so that might be also influencing what's happening there so hickory smoke was our next port of call with the distress inks so let's pop some hickory smoke onto here and again, you can see immediately I'm putting down 
more colour. That's it's straight away got a higher impact, I would say, on what's going on on the tag already. Same thing you can do is come over these other colours. But now rather than sort of overlaying, what it's slightly doing is creating a mistiness. It's one of the things with the oxides is their glorious mistiness. Uh, and we're going to we're going to see that in action quite soon because we are going to add water. Adding water is the great joy of working with the distress line because these inks and the oxides are water reactive. They are designed to play with water. So water can move them around, they will move. But the other amazing thing with the oxides is that adding water gives a, ha -ha, an oxidized look, a sort of chalky oxidization that gives you a wonderful patina, is how I would say it, patina, is how most people would say it on the other side of the Atlantic. So you can see, again, straight away that there is deeper coverage. Uh, the more opaque inks are cooler in tone, partly because they are covering up that manila background where I've got the dis translucent distress inks on the manila tag. The warmth of that manila tone is coming through. So in a minute, we'll have a look at both of these on the watercolour paper and you'll see the difference that I'm talking about. So I went back in with the faded jeans earlier, so I'm going to do the same here. And woof, look at that. As soon as you layer up that colour, you're getting a really full on blue coming through. And again, I'm going to try and take it into the centre of the tag. I'm trying to be fair about what's happening. So there they are. So this, remember, is on a manila tag. So where the distress inks are, that translucent ink, dye ink, the warmth of the manila means those colours warm up. On the distress oxides, inky fingers, <laughs> that opacity means that that manila has less impact on the tones of the colours. So this all came off the back of the spritz and flick episode. So let's do some spritzing and flicking just to see what happens on these. So very simple, you'll remember, little spritz of water into the palm of my hand and a little flick at the card on the mat. And you can see that that ink is starting to move with the influence of the water, as are the oxides starting to lift into the water. And then it's as simple as pop down a cloth or a piece of paper towel to lift up the medium underneath. So you can get, this is one of the things people were asking, what would happen if I did this with oxides? Well, my first answer would be experiment and find out. My second answer is it works in exactly the same way. Oh, look, I've still got a big blot of water down there. It will lift up the colour uh, and lift away so that you get that beautiful speckled effect. Really works the same way. You can use the oxides in much the same way as the inks and you'll get a similar result but a different kind of look. So let's do a direct comparison on two bits of watercolour paper. I've got a slightly two, <laughs> two bits of watercolour paper. So let's go the exact same colours so that you can see the difference. So here's faded jeans going on. And straight away, you can see that's a much cooler tone, even with that distress ink. So the manila really does make a difference. That that slightly golden glow, the slightly greenish tone to the blue is coming from that manila there. Let's pop the faded jeans on here. Keep picking up stormy sky by mistake, but I think so far I've always managed to put down the right one. So that's faded jeans going on from both colours, from both uh, corners. Again, you can see there there is a slight difference in tone, but much less now that I'm working on the white paper. Let's get some hickory smoke down. First of all, from here. Oh, look, I've put my oxide sponge on the wrong side. Pay attention. I seem to have something else on the wrong side too. I'll, I'll panic about that in a minute. It's the brown one. There we go. 
So hickory smoke going on for the Distress Ink team over here. Lovely soft grey. And again, you can see now that we're on the white paper, you get a lot more clarity in terms of the tone of that. But I don't know if you can also tell that it's, it's, a, it's a little bit harder to get the colour coverage because the watercolour paper grabs hold of the ink much more quickly. Uh, it's much more absorbent. But when I put on the oxide, you can see that it's very, very easy to get that opaque coverage. Just let that sit. I might take a little bit of that through the middle so we have got a slight variation uh, going on compared to the tags. I'm taking a bit more hickory smoke through the middle there. And then let's bring in our gathered twigs. No, ground espresso, beg its pardon. Ground espresso coming in, layered over the top on here. And you can see immediately that's the colour that takes over. If I put the ground espresso on, because these inks are, these oxides are opaque, that's going to cover things up. Whereas, that side, if I take the ground espresso here, it's going to have a much more subtle layered effect with those other colours that are already there. It's not going to be quite such a, a bully, I guess. <laughs> um, there we go. So that's the two on white toned watercolour paper, as opposed to the manila tags. I'm trying to be fair, so I'm, I'll put on a bit more faded jeans over here as well, so you can see how that changes things. So a direct comparison between the manila and the white card there, you can see that with the Distress inks, the colour of the paper underneath makes quite a difference to the colour of the ink finish that you end up with. It's also true here. Despite the opacity of those Distress Oxides, it's a different kind of quality and that's partly because of the absorbent nature of this watercolour paper, which grabs hold of a lot more pigment. So there's a sort of deeper pigment to those. I may also have put on a bit more faded jeans uh, in that last bit because it was building up on the sponge by then. So I'm just clearing off here just so we don't get any complications. And then I'm going to do that quick spritz and flick again just to compare. Just popping that on. And again, having some paper at the ready, I let it have a few seconds to pick up the inks. And you can see on here, this effect is going to be quite dramatically different on the oxides, just because with so much more colour available, the contrast where it picks up will be altogether different. And you can see there, there's also a different effect on where it spreads out, because with the oxide, it's not only picking up the pigment, it's also creating this lovely softening effect around the edges, which is this oxidization that I was talking about. So again, you can get that spritz and flick effect with both sets of colors, no problem at all, but you are going to get a slightly different impact according to which formulation of ink you're using. So that's watercolor paper. Let's try one more little uh, experiment because I just want to show you the difference between a plain application, let's say, of, for instance, the stormy sky. Let's go with, that's a, and I'm gonna put the same thing on both bits of watercolor card. So I'm just going to do oxide to come around. Get a nice lot of stormy sky onto here. And then same onto here. And you can see as I'm working and I'm getting more ink onto the sponge, it becomes easier to apply color. So again, 
just notice that in playing things change things move on <laughs> things get different and you'll get slightly different effects and slightly different impacts so i better go back on in order to be fair and get a bit more of this onto here and finally a bit more onto here so i'm layering up that pigment layering up that oxide pigment and I'm going to do a little bit on two strips of manila tag as well. So I'm just going to take one of these tags, rip and rip, and put the same oxide, the Distress Oxide Stormy Sky, onto this manila tag. And again, as I layer it up, you'll see that manila starts to vanish into the background but it still does have a different tone, despite the opaque look of it. If I carried on building, but that's not really my purpose today, I would end up with a closer to true stormy sky going on there. So the reason I'm inking up two lots of these is I want to show you the difference between this colour left as it is and this colour given a little spritz of water to allow the oxidisation, the chalky oxidisation to happen. So I think those are about fair. <laughs> okay. Once I start inking, it's just such a pleasurable physical activity that relationship with colour, uh, it, it's, a, it's a physical act and it's lovely to play with. So I'm going to keep these two nicely out of the way whilst I give these, I'll put that down the wrong side again, and the grey is the wrong side as well. Are you the oxide one? Oh no, it's the blue. There it is. Over there, just to be disciplined about it. I'm going to give these a little spray of water and let them just play for a moment. So this again is about giving the ink and the water time to play. I could go straight in with the heat tool and dry this, but that's sort of not what I want to do today. I want to give the ink and the water a chance to really interact, to really do their thing. Really let that rest and play. And then yes, I might in the final stages come in so this time you'll notice i haven't picked that water up so i'm not creating the splotchy look in the spritz and flick way i've just given these ox this oxide color a spritz of water to let it start to do its chalky alteration and again you'll you'll notice there's a profound difference between working with the manila uh, base and working with the watercolour paper, there is, a, there is a happy medium, you'll be happy to know. There's a beautiful range of mixed media cardstock, which is paler in tone than manila. It's not quite as white as the watercolour paper, but it gives you a smooth surface like the manila tags, as opposed to the textured watercolour paper. And it gives you a, a whiter surface than the manila tags. So let's now have a look at and i'm hoping the camera will pick this up so this is the stormy sky as stormy sky and this is the stormy sky given that lovely softening chalky look of the water and you do obviously get a bit of texture from the water as well but i haven't picked that up i've just let it do its job and it gives you that slight shift into a softened chalky look. I'm going to do it with a darker colour so that you can have a look at that. So let's do the exact same thing. And then for today, I think we'll probably call it a day. <laughs> so let's try oh, old favourites, vintage photo. Let's get a bit of watercolour paper and a bit of manila. And I'm going to go on with the vintage photo on all four of these pieces just to have a look at what we get. So lovely, rich, nutty brown vintage photo. It is 
that colour that faded old vintage photos take on. It's also one of the best colours for just edging a piece of card to give it a, a beautiful weathered or distressed look, an aged look. Uh, I'll do that on one of those tags in a minute so you can have a look. But you can see it's it's that much warmer, <laughs> a nutty brown, when it goes over that manila colour as opposed to over the white watercolour paper. So yeah, really the difference that paper can make. It also goes onto the paper differently. Uh, this thing I was talking about, that slightly sheeny surface, just means that I can sort of move that ink around. Shorthand for it is oxide ink. Uh, so it is ink, even though we're not using distress inks at the moment, we're using distress oxides. So there we are. So these two I'm going to set aside. These two I'm going to give a spritz of water just right across the whole surface. And yes, of course that ink is now moving. It can't help it when you put water onto it, but it's also getting that lovely sort of <sighs> patina, patina, slightly faded, slightly chalky, and oxidized look. And this is incredible for sort of mixed media work or just a delightful background. So yes, there's a wonderful simplicity to just applying ink to your background and having that available to stamp on or to layer into a journal page or a collage. But then how much more interesting is a background where you've got this incredible texture going on? Just a beauty to it. And I suppose in the interests of fairness, we should really be doing the same thing with some Distress ink, just to show that it does happen slightly differently. So I'm gonna rip up another tag, just as well, I've got lots of these. But really playing with these inks, playing with your mediums is the best way to discover what they're capable of. It, it's the best way to really find out the ways you like to use them, the things that make you happy. You may be somebody who prefers this very soft, even coverage. I tend to be somebody that likes to go for texture. I'm going to let those carry on doing what they're doing while I do this over here. So this is vintage photo again, but this is vintage photo distress ink. You can see how old mine is. It's so faded. I've refilled this from the refillers many times. If you'd like to see the refilling process. We can certainly do that sometime. Uh, and one of the things I'm planning to do uh, in a future midweek inking is certainly to do some stamping with both of these kinds of ink, both with the oxides and with the distress inks, so that you can see the different things that happen in those cases. So putting on some vintage photo so that we can do a direct comparison. I think it might be time to refill the vintage photo again. It is a much used ink, so um, yeah, it does empty. Some people like to just buy a completely fresh pad. I really like the little glass bottles of the reinkers that you get with the distress inks. They're like something out of a chemistry lab or a vintage apothecary, uh, and that that makes me really happy. They're little glass bottles with droppers in, and they're. They're just a, a lovely object in and of themselves, those bottles of Distress re -inker. So again, you'll be seeing as I'm doing this with the Distress ink, there's a much bigger difference in terms of the tone when I'm going on different coloured papers because these Distress inks are translucent compared to the opaque. Compared to, that's the thing, compared to the opaque Distress Oxides. So the colour of the paper underneath is going to make much more difference. It does make a difference with the oxides, but it's going to make much more of a difference when you're talking about distress inks. So you can see it's this same process of layering up the ink. I'm going in circles so that I get that blendedness. Try not to end up with too many sponge marks. And I might put just a little more onto each of these manila ones. You can see as I go for that second layer, here it comes, building the density of that colour. 
you can see the extra layer gives you that extra. So let's be fair in our experiment. And let's move these two to one side. So the same thing we did with the oxide version. And I'm just going to give those a little spritz of water. Oops, I caught that one in my rear view mirror. And let that just move around. And you'll see that although it moves the ink, it's lifting it away from the paper. It gives you a slightly different kind of look from when you've got the actual oxidisation of those oxide inks. Go. And it also likes to run to the edges of the pieces of paper, but I quite like that because then you get that beautiful outline on the torn bit. And I do love my texture. So let's make this go in that order. So here are my unspritzed pieces at the bottom. Here are my spritzed pieces at the top. To do that. And you can see that is continuing to move. You can get beautiful sort of little runnels of texture, a different thing, but the glow of the Distress Ink remains there. Whereas on the Oxide side, you really do get this kind of chalky matte look. The Distress Inks will always give you a lovely translucent glow where once you activate these Oxides with water, you're going to get this real sense of chalky opacity. So that's that's the full range of those. It's not as clear with the stormy sky as it could be, just because that's quite a pale colour. But actually, when you look closely, you can see there's a significant shift in that chalky tone. Much less on the watercolour paper. This is one reason I'm, I don't use watercolour paper a great deal when I'm working with Distress Inks. There are plenty of people who do and get amazing results, different results. Uh, let's have a look at Distress Ink and Distress Oxide on Manila Tag. So that chalky opacity versus the sort of glow of light that you get with the translucent. Even clearer, really, on the watercolour paper that you get these incredible blooms and chalky textures compared to a nice smooth matte finish. So none of these is wrong <laughs> and none of these is right. None of these is what you're supposed to do. They are all different options and different versions. You, you might want a really textured background. You might want a really chalky oxidized background. You might want a really smooth application. But with all of them, layering the colours, giving yourself that sort of chance to build colour. I'm just going to do exactly what I said earlier and just show you what a great colour vintage photo is for creating an edging on a tag. I have done this in the past, but I said I was going to talk in more detail as I did it. So I'm really just coming in from the very edge, hitting that edge at a slight angle. I've angled my blending tool so that I'm really catching the edge of the tag and bringing in that colour to let it just age the look of things. So the eye is now drawn right into the centre of that tag. And of course, you can do that in exactly the same way with your oxide. And again, I've sent the brown sponge over here somewhere. There it is. So I can bring in but this is going to require a slightly more subtle hand because as we know from the oxides, they have a tendency to take over. So if I really just want to hit the edge, then I need to make sure I don't go too far into the middle of the tag just to create that little edging. So I hope that's started to answer some of the questions about inks and oxides. We will go on to have a look at how I choose my colours. We will go on to have a look at stamping using both inks and oxides and we'll go on to have a look at other things that one can do. I hope that these midweek inking sessions will be useful for those who are trying to explore their supplies, trying to open out their supplies and use them more. The key thing is come and play. Don't try to get the same results as me or anybody else. Have a play and see what happens. 
the only thing that was wrong is to leave the ink in the pad and not let it come out to play. So thank you very much for being here. If you've enjoyed this, do give me a thumbs up, add a comment if there's something you didn't understand or you'd like to ask a question about or something you'd like to roll over and see some more of in a midweek inking session. As I say, these probably won't be every week, but I'll try to do it at least a couple of times a month. And yeah, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment. If you haven't already subscribed and you like more of this basic inky play, do join the channel Words and Pictures and I'll look forward to welcoming you back here to get some inky fingers with some midweek inking again in the future. Happy crafting all.